Logan, this my good friend. Yes, He's good. Your best friend. This is a list of greatness right here. <laughs> you know I can tell you one thing. They gonna have a nastiness mm. about this football team. No doubt. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> we've got an exciting show here. Tanner, we got the game day crew back together. That's right, we will be talking to B Mitch in my yeah. studio. Yeah. Well, our guy, we will have him in the studio. And we see all the speculation, right? Yeah. Talking about trading up, <laughs> trading down, trading all over the place. But we're going to get into some draft day dreaming later in the show. And then, of course, mm -hmm. y'all favorite duo. Oh. Tanner and Fred Smooth yes. will be just chilling. You know just what? Chilling. Me and Logan will pull up with them, too. All that starts right now. Welcome, Commanders family, into Command Center, presented by Seeky, the official primary ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. I'm Brian Cole Jr. here with Santana Moss, Fred Smoot, Logan Paulson, and fellas, we are just a month away mm. from mm. Detroit, here from the NFL Draft. Now, we filled a lot of holes in free agency, mm -hmm. right? We've had a very active free agency. Yeah. However, still <laughs> holes to be filled. Yeah. Yeah. We have what a draft up? coming up. We have free agency, more free agency coming up. Tanner, how would you fill these holes? What I love from the moves that we did already, I think one of the things that I would like to see that we bring into the building again, we just got rid of, oh, I can't say we got rid of him, but we just lost Curtis Samuel. So yeah. I would love to see a receiver come in here. I think, you know, we had a, a lot of the receivers that fit the same, you know, the you know, same mold. mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It'll be mm -hmm. great to see somebody with a little more size, a guy who can still go out there and be a threat as well with the other guys. Cover man, cover man, cover man. You, 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 you can never have enough depth at cornerback. Yeah, you can no, never have absolutely. enough depth at safety. I know we brought in Jeremy Chin. We still got Emmanuel Forbes developing. We still got guys developing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like we was talking about, yeah. you got to have that, that one dude yeah. in the room. Yeah. And I think we still don't have that one dude to not just be the best corner in the room, mm -hmm. but to share his knowledge yeah. and bring everybody else up to speed. I think that's the thing people forget. Everyone's talking about the draft. We're all excited for the draft. But there is an opportunity here for them to bring in a big time free agent maybe after the draft. Someone gets cut, you know, one of those teams drafts yeah. a corner in the first round, they cut a veteran. Our, their, their losses are game. We can take advantage of that yeah. for sure. And for me, it's got to be offensive tackle. In terms of positions, we got to identify, right? Obviously, they re signed Cornelius Lucas, really good football player, swing, swing tackle, but I think if they can get a little bit more talented, a little bit more athletic at the position, that's going to bode well for whoever's playing quarterback next year. Yeah. And fellas, it is just a month, but it is a month for these prospects to raise their stocks. Now, yeah. they got these pro days coming. We've been very active. Active yeah. at the pro days. Now, Tanner, yeah. you had a pro day back in your day, right? No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like that. Too, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? No, pro days are fun. I think one of the things about pro days back in my day, you had to have the leverage to have a pro day. Yeah. You know, most guys went out there at the combine and did this short of that stuff. Yeah. I said, hey, I'm going to make sure I get back on my home turf and show you what I can do. What'd you show, Tanner? What'd you well, show? Well, I, I ran a 4 2 6. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I did some things, yeah. but then also at my pro day, I, I told those guys, because I had the leverage on my side, that hey, after this 40, I'm not going to run routes. So I'll see you in 30 more days. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now, so these guys are already coming into the, with those kind of, you know, hey, I would do this or, yeah. I, won't, or I won't do this. But yeah. pro day is one of those times when you really stretch your stuff. And Fred, I got to yeah. imagine when y'all ran those four twos. It was saying, y'all raised your Don't encourage it. Quite Don't encourage it. <laughs> yeah. I believe in you, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I imagine you would raise your stock quite a lot running yeah. those times. Yeah. Who do you feel raised their stock in these? Pro days. JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, everybody's hearing his name. Yeah, we and, are. See, this is why I think he's his stock is rising like this. You gotta realize we got a guy that one he didn't have to throw the ball 40 mm -hmm. times a game. So now that the, the coaches and the GMs are getting around him and watching him throw the ball, watching him uh talk to teammates, yeah. watching him, period, I think it's raising his stock, and I think he understands now is I am the best pro quarterback ready for this league right now. And I, I think a lot of people say that because he didn't have a lot on his plate. He was he he was asked to do something, he did it, and he showed that he could do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously uber talented guy. Like yeah. watching him at the combine, the way the ball jumps off his hand is super yeah. impressive. But those guys, I think, already know that, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. know that a little bit. They've seen the film, they understand what it is. For me, it's just, this is an opportunity for the coaches, the GMs, to get to meet the player yeah. one more time, right? Yes. They met him at the combine, ah, maybe they didn't get a great vibe. Yeah. Meet him at the pro day, yeah. get him in for an official. This is just another data point to kind of understand the human being that's going to be leading your organization. So in terms of guys that performed well or not, like yeah. we're not going to have preview to that. Because yeah. it's how they did at the dinner the night before. Yeah. Or how they interacted with their teammates, and that's yeah. not on film. So I think that's what we're looking for there, and only the coaches and the, and the teams know. 
all that. And Logan, we didn't just add bodies to the roster. We also added draft picks. So I'm gonna start with you, Logan. What did we get out of that third and fifth round pick that we got for Sam, especially that third round pick? How valuable yeah. is that? I mean, I get juice for draft capital, right? Because yeah. not only is it a player, right? They, yeah. they talk about in this draft class, the top 100 guys being extremely, extremely valuable. So you're gonna yeah. get a good football player there. Yeah. It allows us to package picks potentially if we wanna move around, right? Mm -hmm. It just gives us some, another tool, more money, if you will, to kind of make, make the position exactly what we need it to be, right, Fred? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And third round has been our golden round. Yeah. Like, we, we found a lot of hidden talent in that third round. And you talk about getting that for a quarterback you drafted two years yeah. ago, you got to understand the value in that. And like he said, the top 100 players, it's tons of talent there. Speaking of value, third round, you got a guy like Steve Smith in 2001 mm. was yeah. drafted yeah. third round. You yeah. got Lance Briggs. He's another potential yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah. And then you got Terry McLaurin yeah. that was drafted yeah. to yeah. third yeah. round. Terry was a research. Yeah. 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 Terry was a research. Yeah. Yeah. Third round draft pitch. That shows you right there how much value it is in that pick. And that's why I think people are so excited about that third round because with that third round pick, we have six picks in the top 100. And you know what, fellas? Let's take a look at our full list of draft picks. It's time for our lucky numbers brought to you by Maryland Lottery Fast Play Games. Play fast, win fast today, but please play responsibly. Now, a few updates after the Commanders Free Agency. You see we have six picks in the top 100 after that Sam Howell trade that got us a third and a fifth round pick. Now, let's welcome in a Washington legend and our game day analyst, Brian Mitchell, for more on the draft and free agency. That's right, Commanders family. We have the game day crew <laughs> back together. Welcome yeah. in Brian Mitchell, Super Bowl champion winning. Brian Mitchell, man, it's good to see you, brother. You too, brother. Yes, sir. Now, we know I you're seen busy. Him. I haven't yeah, seen you. I haven't seen you. I thought you were hiding from us. Yeah. Time, nah, never that bad. We're good to see you. And we got to get your takes on this because so much mm -hmm. has happened since you last been oh, in our yes. studio. Free agency. How yeah. you feeling? How, how do you think we've done so far? Well, we've done great, I think. We have a whole new team here. I can take <laughs> You know, I know there's some guys left that we didn't want to leave, the guys that we're very familiar with. But I think when you ultimately start looking at this thing they were 4 and 13 last year mm -hmm. and then you see Adam Peters comes in and I think everyone said we wanted Adam Peters yeah. that was the number one catch once you get him here, let him do his job. Yeah, really and do. now he signs for people. And I know there are some people that may not be the youngest guys, not the biggest names, but you have guys that can play, mm -hmm. still in their prime. And he also have them in positions to where he has some uh, possibilities moving forward. Yeah. You know, you don't have, you have one year deals, two year deals, three year deals, but guys that can actually play still. Mm -hmm. And then now when you go to the draft, you get some younger guys, those guys can grow into their role. Yeah. So I like what he's doing. And I've always said it. That you no know, team has all young or all old. Mm -hmm. You got to have a great mixture of it, and they seem to have that right now. Yeah, speaking of draft, besides the quarterback position, uh, what other area you want to see this team address? I want to see them keep addressing that offensive line mm -hmm. and a D line. I mean, Pat, you got to have pass rushes in this league. Yeah. You got to protect your quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, we got. Uh, two very good guys, Luvu yeah. and also uh, uh, Wagner, Wagner yeah. and linebacker. You still want to get you another linebacker mm -hmm. there, Definitely. you know? And then again, tight end. Tight end has become the position yeah. in this draft. You draft, you sign Jack, uh, I mean Zach Ertz, and you still have some younger guys on this team. But if you could find one in that draft that could come in and begin to grow and become that guy, yeah. you know, when you look at the better teams in the, in the league now. Their tight ends are beasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want to try and find something just like that, and I believe they're going to work on it. And B Mitch, a big part of these draftees' development is mm -hmm. this new coaching staff yeah. that we had. And it seems like there's just a level of excitement that we haven't seen in a really long time. How do you feel Dan Quinn did putting this staff together? <laughs> I think everybody was sitting there earlier talking about who they wanted. Yeah. And you know, my man Ben Johnson kept popping up. And I can remember when Adam Peters said I wanted to get a leader of men. Not offense, not defense, mm -hmm. but a leader of men. And once the Dan Quinn signed, I remember seeing Adam at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, y'all doing some things here. <laughs> he says, it's all because of him. Mm -hmm. And you hearing guys talk, you know, uh, Jason Simmons, my guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ken Norton. All these guys came here because of Dan. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that says a lot about him. And you look at all these coaches. You got former head coaches on this thing. Bingo. Okay, we got Lynn. We got we got our man Kingsbury. Those guys are going to be able to take a lot of pressure off of Dan. Let him go do yeah. his thing while they handle the rest of it. So I'm I'm happy about all the things. And I and then what I always ask. Can we develop guys? Yeah, big right time. now, we seem to have the, the staff that can actually do that. That's big, because that's basically looking at some of the things that he said in his presser. He's walking it like he talk it. Yeah. He said in his presser, he want to get guys that, you know, not only I'm going to get these coordinators to come in here, I want the guys under the coordinators that's going to be yeah. in these position, you know, or, or jobs who's going to be coaching to be just as well gr grounded or groomed like these coordinators. So it's great to see these other yeah. guys that, that he brought in here. They're showing you that it's deeper than just getting players. You got to have these coaches. We talk 
so much right. about oh, a lot yeah. of these guys not being coached mm -hmm. up well, but it's great to see that some of the coaches that's coming here are top tier coaches as well. Yeah, you look at a lot of the coaches. A lot of these coaches play this game too. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it doesn't. You don't have to play the game to be great at it. But sometimes it makes it a little easier for your guys to start to listen to you. Yeah. And the quicker they start listening and following what you're trying to say, the quicker your team will be better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I look around this. I was walking through the, the bubble when they were all over there, and I'm like, ah, he played, he played, he mm -hmm. played, he played. Yeah. And I hadn't seen kids since we last uh, played games together. Wow. And we used to go at it, you know. Wow. And I can tell you one thing. They're going to have a nastiness mm -hmm. about this football team. And you know me, Tim. I can't wait. I always <laughs> want to listen. I, I, I'm nice off the of field. On the football field, I didn't like nobody. Yeah. I didn't like half my teammates. <laughs> and I think down. it's time to have that type of man mindset. I understand this game is changing, mm -hmm. but you know what? You still got to have a, a bad-ass, mean attitude on the football mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. And I look at this team, and I think this coaching staff is going to lead this squad. I'm going to just say, Wagner, mm -hmm. you got a defensive leader. Yeah. Yeah. You got a guy who's going to hit everything moving. Louvu, that's a year. All he's, mm -hmm. he's a hit man. Yeah. He wants to hit everybody out there. Train so assassin. I'm expecting to see this defense get their level pushed up and offensively. Allegretti, bring that love. <laughs> <laughs> Bean. <laughs> Bean, Mitch, man, it is so nice to have you back. You on too, set. Nice to have the game and crew together. I'm Boys sure Commanders family, you miss seeing us, but you know what? We will be back <laughs> giving you all the content you need for draft day in mm -hmm. Detroit. There you go. Now it all starts Wednesday night where B. Mitch, Santana, and I will give you a complete draft preview. Then the main event kicks off Thursday evening with the Command Center Draft Special. We will get you ready for the draft and give you instant analysis while the commanders are on the clock. We got you covered all draft long, so make sure you tune in. B. Mitch, brother, we appreciate you being here, man. We know you're a busy appreciate guy, you, man. Good to see the Super Bowl ring again. Hey, gotta bring it out. <laughs> Now with the draft just a month away, there is a ton of speculation around what people should do with their picks. Should they trade up? Should they trade down? Should they stay where they're supposed to be? And fellas, I feel like we gotta get in mm -hmm. on this draft dreaming here. We're gonna have a little fun with this, paint some scenarios and what could possibly happen if these scenarios take place. Mm -hmm. So for instance, what if we trade up? Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Let me get in <laughs> yeah, the Show them how it works. <laughs> Trade alert! You gotta understand, we only going up one pick, but it, it, it's gonna take a lot for that to get done, and, and, and we're gonna do this by studying what happened last year with Chicago and Carolina right there. Like they had to give up a play on DJ Moore. So now that I, uh, I can compare it to that, let's see how uh, we can get this situation started. All right, now, to get up to this number one, and we know if we go up to number one, we know who we going up here to get. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to keep the native son at home, all right? But that's gonna take a lot. You gotta realize, we're talking about giving them the number two pick, giving them one of our second round picks, giving them our first round next year, and here go the key thing, a player. Last year, this was DJ Moore. We know what type of player he is, Pro Bowl player. So you're gonna have to give up a lot of collateral to get up to number one, to get the guy that you want to keep at home. And the question by many is, is he worth all of this? Mm -hmm. And I think this is gonna have to be the question. But we all know, franchise quarterbacks do not grow on trees. So is it worth it? Maybe. Maybe not. And fellas, that is a ton of <laughs> real estate to invest yeah, into a number one pick. So, I gotta ask, yeah. what happens if we say, you know what, we're staying pat, we're staying at number two, what do we do then? That's why you asked me. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to keep things simple here, man. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm saying, if I can't get the guy that I want, you know who all, we all want, the yeah. native son, you call yeah, him, yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Caleb. And we can't get that guy, then I'm staying my ground because I think the next best quarterback, and when we're talking about these quarterbacks, we don't know what these guys are gonna be. We're talking about potential. potential we're right. talking about what these guys showed us from their track record yeah. to now, pro days, combine, and what you think they might be. Yeah. So right now, with our makeup and the things we're trying to build here in Washington, I think there's one guy that stands out other than Caleb that fits our mode, yeah. what we're trying to do with this offense, and that's none other than Jaden Daniels. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm staying yeah, put at and number two, two for yeah. Jaden Daniels. I think he's a guy that's fit, qualified. Last year, three over three three thousand something yards, mm -hmm. forty something touchdowns passing, another thousand yards on the ground, yeah. ten or eleven touchdowns on the ground running. I mean, this guy's fit what we're trying to do, and we need some excitement here in Washington. <laughs> yeah. Not only excitement, we need to win some games, and I think Jaden Daniels fits that mode. And if we do stay, 
Fans might be excited, mm. they might be upset. Mm. But one thing we know fans are definitely torn on is if <laughs> we, we trade down. down. Some people yeah. love it, most people are terrified of it. Yeah. Yeah. Logan. Yeah, I'll take oh, this one. Yeah, I'll talk about this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but if it did happen, this is what I think we do. I think Minnesota, they packaged all those picks together. They moved up into the third, the first round. They got 11 and 23. I think when they do that, that gives them an opportunity to trade up into the top, into the number two spot. So if we were to do that, right, we would take the, we would take their 11th pick. We take the 23rd pick. We'd probably take a first the following year, and maybe a second, and maybe a first the year yeah. after that. Yeah. Wow. So it is a huge draft haul. So for a team that's got to build and fill a lot of holes, yeah. I know this isn't necessarily the most appetizing option, especially if you think Jaden Daniels is the guy. Mm -hmm. But also, if you're a little unsure, if you don't love the guy, yeah. let's get more opportunities to bite at that apple. And just to illustrate this point, let's talk about this. We're going to take a look at some film of guys that could be at five, yeah. guys that could be at 23, and there's a lot of good football players. So let's head into the film room and check it out. All right, so we traded up, we traded back, and we traded back up again. And the reason we did that is so we get more football players. Yes. And one of the reasons you're doing that is maybe for a quarterback. Now, we're going to talk about J.J. McCarthy here, <laughs> yeah. but it could be Drake May. It could, it could be, be anybody. We don't know who it's going to be, but yeah. it could be somebody. No. And the, we, the reason I like our guy, J.J., man, he is sneaky, powerful throwing this football. Yes. This ball is 65 yards in the air to the receiver, right? Yes. You see the arc in this thing. You see the touch on the football. The other thing I love about this is when you watch this man's mechanics, watch the rhythm, guys. Yes. He's on rhythm. Easy. He's, he's not like he's muscling that ball. Yeah. It's in the rhythm. It's on the stroke. Love That's what happens when you're coached by Jim Harbaugh, a, yeah. a quarterback guru. I mean, that guy was at IMG. He yes. was at Michigan. Yes. Like, he's had a ton of good quarterback influence. And I love seeing this, Tana, this kind of deep comeback. Again, mm -hmm. watch the rhythm of his feet. Watch the timing, watch the quick release, and that ball is on the money, Airfulness. on a rope, yes. outside the hash. So yeah, that's that. one guy you could go up for, right? Yes. Yeah. Quarterback, whoever it is, right? Yes. JJ's one guy, right? Another guy is receiver. There are a lot of good receivers at the top mm -hmm. of this class. It one is. of those dudes is going to fall, right? Yes. Your league neighbors, Roma Dunze is one of them. And, Tim, you talked about this. Like, when I watch this gauntlet drill, I see a dude who's 6'3", 215, and is smooth as all outdoors, right? Look at him catch this football. You right said here. it though, 6'3, 215. Big body guy catching the ball that smooth. And then when you see some of the things that he's done at the line of scrimmage from the like, show right here. Yeah, like watch know, like watch his feet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very nimble, man, and agile at the line of scrimmage. To have a big body, that big presence, to be able to sink your hips like that. You know, Jermaine, he, he reminds me of Jamar Chase. You know, Jamar Chase might not be as tall as him, but they had the same kind of body structure. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And then you got a guy like Andre Johnson, who I played with in college, man. So big, so fast. So powerful, so he's one of those guys that's gonna raise eyebrows. Love the footwork, and then the other thing he's excellent at is knowing when to jump for the football. You see, guys at the combine yeah. mess this yeah. drill up all the time. They yeah. jump too early, jump too late. You can tell he came out the womb catching 50 50 balls, yes, he did. Yeah. and yeah. that is his superpower. Does a great job. So, you can get those guys right, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we've also got a pick at 23. So, we got I'm thinking offensive linemen there, Why guys. Not? There's mm -hmm. some big guys. We got Latham right here. That's I can't even get the circle. That man's so uh, big, right? Massive man. Massive man. 340, 6'6. Yeah. Also, uh, a Mary Smith. Yeah, right? yeah. Tyler yeah. Guyton. There's a, guy, a ton of guys in that range. You say, Got to make this yep. football player, the football team better right now. And so, I just see a guy, I mean, it, it, it screams power. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look at this massive man <laughs> move, and the quickness scares you. The Boy, power man, scares you. Like, this is what you want to look like getting off the bus in the NFL. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a big, wide body. And I love the kick step. Watch his foot right here. Mm -hmm. Watch the snap. You know, he's not the, maybe the most fleet of foot guy. Yeah, yeah. But when he's past setting, it looks pretty clean. And that's the type of thing you get. A difference maker at five, yeah. a difference maker at 23, and yeah. then you still have the 36 pick, man. Boy, yeah, man. You can do a lot of damage there, especially with a big ugly there like this go. one. You know, a guy that is going to be an absolute game changer for yes. us. Yes. And, fellas, I think we're all wondering if we're going to add to the offensive line within this NFL draft. Now, one way we did add to the offensive line was through free agency. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to hang out with Tyler Biotis on Free Agent Fridays, where me and him got to talk about all things commanders and asked him a question from a lucky fan. What advantages do you get from remaining in the NFC East? I mean, just knowing knowing who you're going up against. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of uh, common opponents. I would say, you know, going from one place in the division to another yeah. place in the same division. <laughs> yes, <sir>. So, um, <laughs> but definitely um, experiences. You know, it's a huge asset to anyone in regards of life in, in itself, really. But I mean, just you know, having played Philadelphia. You know, being on the Cowboys, playing the New York Giants. So, like, there's a lot of familiar places, plus there's a lot of time invested in those preps and those guys and that, those those type of schemes and everything like that. So, um, that would probably be the biggest one, but also being on a, a, a good part of a organization, too, with an O-line, you know, in Dallas and, you know, learning from guys that are 
you know, like Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and yeah. that are, you know, going to be Hall of Famers at one day. So um, with much respect, but, um, you know, just putting that knowledge towards this journey now with Washington. I'm yeah. very excited. You can catch my full interview with the Commander's newest lineman tomorrow on the Commander's YouTube page. And I'll be catching up with more of our guys this offseason for Free Agent Fridays. So be sure to drop your questions in the comments. And speaking of segments you want to tune into, it's time to just chill. Take it away, fellas. It's time for Just Chill, brought to you by Steam Fitters. Just chill. <laughs> Steam Fitters. UA Local 602 provides the highest HVAC and mechanical piping services. Now for this version of Just Chill, me and Logan Paulson are chilling with Fred <laughs> Smooth and Santana Moss. Now, we all know it's March Madness, which means plenty of brackets. And Fred Smooth here, yes. he has his own podcast called the Get Loud Podcast with Mike James. Get Loud! And wow, y'all did something loud. with the brackets, right? Yes, we did. Explain to us what we got here, Commander bro. Madness. <laughs> what we did is replace the bracket with college people with X. Washington players. Yes, yes. I said Washington, Washington players. Player. And we talking about the past. We talk about the presence. And in this bracket, they have to cancel each other out. And as you notice, we got a lot of great names. Besides mm -hmm. that one, we got a lot of great names on this board. And, and it's, it's a long way to get there. We play no favorites. Yeah. We just do it by who brought more to the team. Yeah. Now, fellas, what we're going to have you guys do. So Fred did a bracket, right? Yes, I did. That's not coming out till tomorrow. So we're yes. going to keep that a secret. So what Fred's here to do, he's here to judge your guys' bracket. So what we want you to do, not the full bracket, but I just want to know who are y'all champions gonna be? You're gonna have a defense and you're gonna have an offense. So right now you're looking at defense. So you yep. gotta look at this list right here and say, yeah. you know what, who will be playing in my championship game? Y'all so, ready, fellas? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Who you, what you got? Well, we're gonna fast forward, so yeah. we wanna get a chance to pick one. Here, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna pick my man Dow Green down. Dow Green, all right. All right. Y'all okay. played 20 years here. I mean, I mean, talk about Mr. Longevity. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. I'm afraid how you feel about that pick. When you say Washington, they say Daryl Green. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like, he said two decades. Yeah. You got to realize, he won a Super Bowl mm -hmm. with Doug <laughs> and played with me. <laughs> Literally. And I saw that while we was walking through the yeah. building. I was like, how am I on a picture yeah. with Daryl Green? Yeah. And then Daryl Green is on a picture with Doug Wynn. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I, I agree with Santana on that one. Yeah. Most definitely, Daryl Green. Well, who you got, Luke? Yeah, for me, it'd be London. London versus Daryl Green. I think yeah. Daryl Green has longevity, but London, mm. man, yeah. I played with him, man. He's my yeah. guy, yeah. man. He's yeah. tour. I love that you guy. You know, Fred so. don't like Iron Man, yeah. but you know. <laughs> 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 That's a hater. Fred's a hater. I love London, but I think people forget about Sam Hull. No, don't doubt The, the, the broadcasting boost stuff also is pretty incredible. Pretty yeah. incredible. Then you got to realize, this is an all-time sack leader right here, Ryan Kerrigan. So it's some guys up here. Don't forget about the champ Bailey's of the world. Sean Taylor, that goes without saying. Uh, D'Angelo Hall. I think yeah. D. Hall yeah. don't get enough love yeah. for the things that he did for this team and his franchise, so most definitely. And I you know, know Fred, yeah. Logan Paulson got it figured out. He stuck with his command center family yeah. and chose London Fletcher, so I like that pick as well. Now, let's look at the offensive side of the ball. We might have some familiar names there over there, too. Let's look at the offensive side of the ball right now. Now, off the rip, Fred, yeah. you missed somebody. Who Logan I mean? Paulson is not on I'm this not list. On he should tough. not be on this list. Yeah, See, <laughs> the one thing about it is, Logan, that's my good friend. Yes, He's good. Your best friend. This is a list of greatness right here. You know what I'm saying? When you say sling your Sammy Bar on here, yeah, when you say three Super Bowl champions right here, you got the posse right here, you got Tanner Man and China Taylor right there, yeah. you got Ringo and these guys. No room for Logan Paulson. That's a great I'm sorry. You, want, you, wanted, you wanted to add somebody. Who'd you want to add? Jordan Reed. Jordan I, like, Reed. I should have added Jordan Reed down here, yeah. even though I know his career was cut short with injuries. Mm -hmm. I just Fell, Jordan Reed is one of the biggest what ifs mm -hmm. in, in Washington mm -hmm. sports history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. And Logan, since you were left out, we're gonna let you answer this one first. Who would be your offensive guy? I, you know, I think I think Doug Williams should be mm -hmm. on there. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I feel. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it all breaks out. I haven't gone through each one, but yeah. Doug was an excellent football player, great ambassador for the franchise. So I definitely think he's uh, Tan, that. is it hard not to pick yourself? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would never pick myself. I'm going with Bobby Mitchell. I'm going with a guy. When I got in here, I heard a lot about him because um, I actually got a chance to meet him and his wife also. Uh, we had one of those things that we do on those, what, uh, getting ready for the oh, season yeah, type, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like yeah. little lunches. Welcome in lunch. And my yep. first year, I surpassed his single season uh, a receiving record. Mm. So I got a chance to meet him and his wife, so I'm going with Bobby Mitchell. Mm. Fred, how you feel they did? I feel like they did well, but I think we be, we, we, we forget about the big uglies. I think Joe Jacoby should have been yeah. deep on some of y'all. 
y'all list. Y'all forget about the Russian <laughs> we on the best. This we is the best. best. We on the best. We don't we don't talk about the big uglies. You know they don't get no press. They just do their job. That's why I try to give them love. But I think y'all know where my heart at is on this list most definitely. But I leave that to tomorrow. Well, while we leave that to tomorrow, we actually have somebody on this list that we're gonna have join the show and give his take on this bracket and join this March Madison. That is a Mr. Doug Williams. Get in here, bro. Let's get right in. I just want to say y'all did a great job. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it all worked out. Yeah. Uh, most definitely. But you now, know what? Anybody on that list could, could there you go. end up being the winner. Well, the one thing about it, in this room, you're the only one of us that got a ring and actually did something for <laughs> yeah. the city. Do you see anybody that we left off of this list? Like anyone that you could just come to your mind right now that we maybe left off? Well, you know what? I'll be honest with you, if it was left up to me, yeah. I put my whole offense line up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you see, no? All the offense. Oh, 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 there you go. Oh, oh, the big. Ugly. <laughs> That's what it's about. A true quarterback right there showing love to his mm-hmm. offensive line. And of course, we have to show love to our commander's family. Mr. Doug, send us off. Hey, I just want to say, I win this straight not because of what we are, yeah. it's what my daughter going to. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a great day, great show. Hey, see you next week. Crushing it. Crushing it. Tonight, Dad came with. He didn't want his little sweet potato to be here without him. But now, he really wishes she was here without him. Next time, he'll just let her roll with her new entourage. And he'll only trust SeatGeek with the tickets. Because when she finds her happy place, he can find his way back to the car. The ticketing app trusted by fans. SeatGeek, so fans can fan.